You've already heard Eric uh, Hendricks speak once before on the uh, dangers of using OpenMDO with more than five people. But um, today he's going to give you guys a demo, not a tutorial, a demo. Uh, the difference being that we do not necessarily expect you to be able to run this yourself. <laughs> Caveat specifically for PyCycle. Um, of PyCycle. Again, if you've ever used NPSS, this is a direct port of NPSS over to OpenMDO coded natively in OpenMDAO. Um, just a little bit of a background. This actually, the PyCycle has served for us as much as like a stress test for OpenMDO. Like how many components can you possibly have in a model and still have OpenMDO function efficiently kind of stress test. Or, or what happens when you have 3,700 different numeric, uh, nonlinear solvers fighting with each other kind of stress test. Um, so we've used it as much as a development like test case for us. Uh, but I think what you'll see is that it's, it's actually at the same time graduated to a point where it's useful as an engineering, practical engineering tool for us. We have published it as an open source tool, so you are welcome to use it. Um, if you have questions, we will try to answer them if we have time. <laughs> With that, Eric. All right. Um, yeah, thanks, Justin. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to start out by mentioning, like Justin was really, really involved in the development of Open uh, of PyCycle early on. Uh, I kind of led a lot of the development later on, in the, but then we had a few other people: Tristan Hearn and Jeff Chin. And I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anybody else. Uh, if I am, I apologize. Uh, that that contributed to this work over the years. Um, just out of curiosity, I think we had like half the people that were coming say that they were interested in. Uh, uh, Pi the PyCycle demo, but who all has used MPSS before knows of MPSS? Okay, so hopefully some of this will look familiar. Uh, if not, uh, MPSS was a code developed here. Uh, Brett was on that development team a long time ago uh, for doing thermodynamic cycle an analysis of aircraft engines uh, or other uh, like power plant uh, cycles and things like that. Um, so MPSS is now run by a consortium of all the engine companies and things like that, but we um, <clears throat> as part of our internal research things, we were looking at a lot of advanced concepts that were coming out uh, of our um, systems analysis groups. So you saw some of the pictures there in the middle for the, the urban air mobility concepts yesterday. Uh, you've seen the Stark Able on the left from some of Neil's work. Um, and the one on the right is a tilt wing vehicle, also kind of from the, or tilt rotor vehicle from the, uh, um, uh, revolutionary vertical lift uh, technology project. Um, so looking at these and a bunch of other concepts like the N3X and things like that, uh, kind of the emerging trend that we saw coming out of these different designs was that um, a lot of these advanced concepts have kind of unconventional configurations that, that have the propulsion system tightly integrated with the rest of the vehicle. Um, and so they have these unique architectures that we need to be able to analyze and explore. And our feeling kind of was that MPSS maybe wasn't going to give us the right uh, tool to be able to go off and evaluate these and, and optimize and design them in this highly coupled context. So um, that's where we started looking at um, some of the challenges that were going into that. Uh, obviously, doing these highly integrated systems pushes us, pushes us outside of our normal design intuition uh, as aircraft engine designers. And so things that you know, how do you design a fan for boundary layer ingestion? Nobody really knows how to do that, for example. So, uh, you know, having some tools that would allow us to do some optimization there would be, we felt would be helpful. Um, usually this means coupling to CFD, which is a lot of what you saw out of Anil's work this morning. Um, and then by doing that, now you increase the number of design variables and things like that, that you need to go um, explore a, a bigger design space uh, as part of this process. So, um, the, other, the last thing is there's a lot of challenges with nested solvers in some of these situations where you have Newton solvers sitting on top of other Newton solvers and kind of the current implementation of, of that process uh, within tools like MPSS is, is really challenging. So our kind of thesis, I guess, going into this probably three or four years ago um, was that uh, some of the methods and approaches that are implemented in the MDAO community and specifically within OpenMDO um, could help alleviate some of these challenges. So we took this idea and tried to like, as Justin said, re-implement a lot of the, the code that goes into like an MPSS model uh, as a layer on top of, or a library on top of uh, OpenMDO. So 
Uh, I think this started back in probably version one, although we, Justin, do we have a version of PyCycle version zero of OpenMDO? We might we have. Did, actually. Jeff Chin and I developed that. Yeah, Jeff Chin and Justin did an early version of PyCycle for, uh, actually for studying the Hyperloop concept. Um, and then that eventually got ported into version one and then over into version two. So we internally went through a lot of the same struggles that everybody else has done or had to do with that jump between different versions. So. I don't know if you want to. Yes, if you're wondering, the application team complains to me when I break the API and their model stop working. So I, I unintentionally set up a system where at least somebody is yelling at me on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, our kind of our thesis or our path forward is this idea that we could use OpenMDO to, to, to do some of this. So what PyCycle is, is basically it's a, a thermodynamic cycle analysis tool similar to uh, MPSS for those of you that have used it. But we've tr specifically implemented it to uh, supply gradient-based optimization algorithms with analytic derivatives, uh, so that we can do some of these tightly coupled uh, and uh, like high-fidelity um, aircraft de engine design uh, processes. So um, I showed this version of this graphic yesterday. Basically, it's built on top of OpenMDO as a library to take advantage of all those things. So we have OpenMDO basically as our uh, core features with all the solvers and optimizers underneath that. PyCycle sits on top of that as a library of different components and groups that uh, do all the, the calculations that need to happen for a cycle analysis, and then we can build a cycle model from that. I think this approach is similar to like what's done with Dimos, Open Arrow Struct, and as Justin told me, Open Concept, Wisdom, uh, Fused Wind, those types of things build some li libraries on top of OpenMDO. Um, so as Justin mentioned, we've released this as open source. So if you want to get it, it's just openmdo slash PyCycle on, on GitHub. And then also um, we published a journal paper here just this year that goes through a pretty detailed explanation of how we set up the code, how we did went through creating derivatives, and then how we verified everything against uh, MPSS and did an optimization uh, comparison. And I'll show some of those results out of that paper here later in this presentation. But if you're looking for a long journal paper to go read on this topic uh, and that might put you to sleep, um, yeah, that, go ahead and check that out. So, um, so a little bit kind of about the, the, the models themselves. And then I'll I'll go into some code here in a few minutes and kind of show you an example of how we how we set this up actually uh, in the in a model. But um, we take a turbofan engine cycle like you, or design that you might see here, uh, just kind of a cross section. Um, and as part of this process, we're just doing an object oriented approach. So each of the components through that engine is a, basically an object uh, or a group in um, in PyCycle, so we have an inlet going to a fan. You then split that flow between the bypass and the, the low pressure spool, and you can kind of see uh, all the components um, that would make up uh, this model over there on the right hand side. So uh, the boxes are all of our different objects. The red and blue arrows are kind of all of our different connections that have to happen. And then we have an optimizer, and actually there's a solver that sits around, around this too that then converges all the uh, the system of nonlinear equations that has to be resolved for this to be a valid model. So, um, so I guess this is the, the main uh, layout uh, for example, the fan LPC and HPC are here are all compressors. So they're all the same type. They're just at different instances of those, ob uh, those objects. So uh, to give you a little, a little bit of uh, insight into how this differs from MPSS. In MPSS, a compressor is like your lowest level component that you would typically see. So you don't really, there's some functions that get called for outside uh, executions, but really people just see it as a component itself where that's your lowest level object. In PyCycle, those are actually groups. Um, and we split that up and we create that as a group and then split up all the calculations underneath that to allow us to do the analytic derivative calculations. So. A compressor in a very simple, uh, simplified view looks something like this, where uh, we have a pressurized calculation uh, that then goes into, which then sets our ideal total thermodynamic properties, which then we use those 
properties to get our enthalpy rise based on efficiency, get the real exit properties from the component, um, and then we go through, calculate the power, and we can also get the static uh, thermodynamic properties. So this is kind of our breakdown. Normally, in, like I said, in MPSS, all this is collapsed into one comp component. Here we split this out into a whole bunch of different objects. Uh, or some of these are components like in the red and then the blues, blue components for all the thermodynamic solves are actually a whole bunch of um, components with solvers and everything like that underneath there. So we split it up in, in this way very intentionally so that we have analytic derivatives easily calculated through the entire process. So for example, that pink box, the only equation in there, it's really easy uh, is pressure I. So the pressure out is pressure ratio times pressure in, and the derivatives are stupid easy as well. So we could easy, uh, pretty quickly go through and, and hand drive all these different calculations. So we did this through a lot of those boxes that you see there, uh, actually all the boxes. So we have analytic derivatives all the way through. Um, but we split it. We split this up into very simple components uh, for this reason of just being able to calculate derivatives through the process. Um, and it was kind of driven by the fact that we have all these really complicated thermod thermodynamic solves uh, all the way through, the, through these different components. So um, this is just one example of a very simple compressor. If you actually look at the code for the compressor, it gets a lot more complicated because there's maps and a whole bunch of other things going on in there at the same time. Um, one thing I did want to talk about real quickly is the thermodynamic properties. Um, so MPSS and a number of other codes implement a, a range of different thermo calculation packages. Uh, so we picked out just one for the for right now, and that's based on the chemical e equilibrium um, analysis CEA code, um, which minimizes Gibbs free energy. So this is a full uh, chemical equilibrium solver. Uh, it's the most complex of the thermo packages out of MPSS. We uh, followed Justin's advice here and went, went big and uh, decided to do the most complicated thing first. Um, it's objectively a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. But it served as a really, really good way to stress test open MDA. Yeah. So, so that's the thermo package that we implemented. Um, we did do some minor, minor variation modifications to make it um, have some smooth analytic derivatives. Uh, I didn't list it in here, but Justin was a lead author uh, with a number of us on a journal paper describing all about how we did the, the chemical equilibrium calculations uh, for Pi cycle. Um, so as a kind of a consequence of going down this path of making the most complicated thing that we possibly could, um, we're now solving all these chemical equilibrium equations as part of our top level solver, uh, which is different than the way MPSS handles things. So an MPSS model might typically have on the order of 100 uh, what they call dependent equations. These are basically your residual equations that have to be solved. Um, now with Pi cycle, we're on, the order, we're on 10 to the 4, if not higher, depending on how complicated we make the models. So um, when we're talking to people that about for, that are familiar with MPSS, this gives them a, a good sense of how much more is going on in our solvers um, and the different approach that we're applying here. So, um, so that's kind of a real quick overview of like how PyCycle is set up and how you build models and some of the different features. I guess what I was going to do right now is jump into a quick example of some of the code. Uh, so I was just going to run our simple turbojet, uh, go through our simple turbojet model and, and run it here. This is in our example. If you go to the Pi cycle repo on Git under example cycles, it's just the simple turbojet.py file. So, <clears throat> um, so here's an example of what that code looks like. Um, working on the screen. KB, command KB. Okay. Um, so here's, uh, um, here's what a, this turbojet model looks like. So we create a class for the turbojet itself. Um, as part of, for anybody that's familiar with MPSS knows there's design mode versus off design mode. So we, we have an option that sets whether it's design or off design, which just changes some of the uh, connections and things like that um, that happen later in the model, which you'll see. 
And then we go through our typical setup process where we add a whole bunch of subsystems. And each one of these subsystems is basically uh, a, a PyCycle group that we've created. So first thing is flight conditions, which sets your uh, ambient air, uh, air am, ambient conditions for like temperatures, pressures, things like that coming into your engine based on altitude. Why are you? Anyway. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and then we have like an inlet uh, that, again, we're giving it a name, specifying a whole bunch of input arguments here. So we have a design flag that's being set that changes some of the calculations internal. And then we also have to pass in some of the thermodynamic data uh, and tables that we're using, as well as some of the elements that are going into our thermodynamic calculations. So that those values kind of have to get, at this point, have to get propagated through all the different components. So uh, we're setting that up. You know, same thing for compressors, combustors, turbines. You can kind of see that this matches that block diagram roughly that you I showed earlier in the presentation, although this is just for a turbojet, so it's not a turbofan model. Um, so basically go through and add in all of our different components. And then, sorry, I don't know why. Um, we go through and we wrote a helper function that's called connect flow. So each of our objects that are like the turbo machinery objects, like the turbine compressor, they spit out a bunch of different thermodynamic properties for the for the flow at that at the exit and entrance of those uh, components. Um, so temperatures, pressures, enthalpy, entropy, mass flow rates, static properties for all those as well. So we wrote a helper function that basically just does all the connections for you. So you don't have to call connect all the time on all these different things. So we just wrote some helper functions there that allow us to go flow out from the flight conditions as the flow into the inlet, for example. And we, in this case, are turning off the mass flow connection because we're gonna use uh, the solver, the optimizer to, to, to set that. Um, so go through and connect the flow station. So this is, I think, the blue lines that you saw in the, in the um, block diagram before. Um, we connect the torque values off the shafts between the turbo machinery components and the shaft itself, um, connect some of the static exhaust pressures, and then uh, a bunch of values into what we have a performance element that calculates uh, specific, specific fuel consumption, overall thrust, things like that. Um, so we're connecting a bunch of values into to that to, uh, to get <coughs> pressure ratios, thrust, things like that. Um, and then we're is everybody familiar with the balance component? It's basically an implicit component that's kind of a lightweight uh, version that you can add things to on the fly. So we're using that balance component to um, vary things like mass flow rate to hit a certain thrust and fuel to air ratio um, to hit like an exit temperature from, from the combustor. And we're doing different balances here um, between design and off design. So that's where why we're inside of this uh, uh, is everybody actually familiar with balance comp, or do you guys want a slightly deeper explanation there? Okay, so a lot of times, forget like implicit versus explicit components. Let's just stipulate for the sake of this discussion that everything is explicit in your model, but there's some input to one of your explicit components that you want to vary such that you make the output of two other components equal, right? So this, this kind of pattern happens all the time. I'm going to vary something so that lift equals drag. I'm gonna vary my throttle, you know, my angle of attack, such that lift equals weight. I, I don't know why you'd want lift equal drag. That's a weird thing to do. Um, so I'm gonna vary my angle of attack such that lift equals uh, weight, and I'm gonna vary my throttle setting such that thrust equals drag, right? And so those are those, the angle of attack and the throttle are become your two state variables, or your two implicit variables. And then you have these four other numbers that you need to set equal to each other. That's what the balance comp is for. So anytime you have you know, a big chain of explicit variables, and then at some point you need to like vary a number to set two other numbers equal to each other. The balance comp is a, is a ready-made way for you to do that. And it has a bunch of nice features of like residual scaling and things like that that should help to make your numerical behavior more well-posed. Okay. Um, so then we basically just go through, set a uh, execution order, set up our sol Newton solver, um, and then, uh, so that really defines our turbojet object. Then we also create a 
really a big uh, helper function here for a viewer that basically prints out all the data that we want to have uh, vi uh, visible to us at the end. So we created some helper functions again that you know prints flow stations, prints outputs from the compressor, and so we're just, we're just giving it names of all the different components and going through that. So if I take this and run it, um, just running Python simple turbojet.py, it'll take a few seconds here to go through the Newton solve and we're running a design case and one off design case. And then it dumps out with those uh, view statements, the, the viewer file function that we wrote, um, <clears throat> what we typically be looking for. So like total pressure, total temperature at all the different stations through the engine. Um, we have compressor. I don't know why some of the compressor st stuff. Oh, there it is. Um, we have our compressor, you know, fl mass flow rates, pressure ratios, things like efficiencies, all that stuff showing up in this table. Same thing with turbines, nozzles. So these helper functions just kind of let you print out things easily um, to the screen so that you can see, see the output that you're looking for. Um, so we ran a design case and an off design case uh, here. So uh, that was a, a very quick uh, introduction to what the files look like and kind of how you go about running it and the type of output that you can get. Um, in the repository that's up on GitHub, we have some more complicated examples of like bi high bypass turbofans. And then if you really want to get into one that we used in the um, in our journal paper, that's the M plus three reference engine, which is a very complicated engine, which looks like this. Um, so it's got a lot more components in it, a lot more connections. Uh, Scott Jones produced this model originally in MPSS. Um, and it was for like this really advanced concept, uh, two or three generations into the future type uh, high bypass ratio engine. So we re-implemented Scott's work for, out of MPSS into PyCycle. It uses a multi-design point approach. So it's actually designing around four different operating conditions at the same time. So those are top, top of climb, sea level static, rolling takeoff and cruise. And so we basically did this comparison be between PyCycle and MPSS to make sure they matched and then some optimization studies around that. So um, in terms of the verification study, we checked all the thermodynamic properties all the way through the engine. And this is the graph on the right is for the four different design points that we're using off of a really complicated model. And we were matched within 0.03% on every single property throughout the entire engine. So basically this is not 3%, this is 0.03%. So we're within like solver tolerance errors uh, on, on, these, on this match. So we're pretty sure we got it right um, in terms of the implementation of the uh, the different components through the out, throughout the engine. So, uh, and this is on top level um, like thrust values and everything like that too, not just the the thermodynamic properties. So, we felt pretty confident that we had uh, matched MPSS sufficiently well, at least for this engine, um, being that all the components just get reused for other engines. I, I have a I'm pretty confident that that's the case uh, for whatever we do. Uh, one of the other things we did was a comparison of um, the total derivatives that you can calculate across MPSS and PyCycle. So we implemented a couple different approaches with MPSS where we just treated it as a monolithic, monolithic black box and calculated derivatives across that and let the MPSS solver work internally. Um, we also did like a semi-analytic approach where MPSS, we we're finite differencing the residuals inside of MPSS as well, and then fully analytic with PyCycle. Um, so just with fully analytic being accurate, or we were assuming those were accurate uh, derivatives, we compared the other approaches with different solver tolerances and step sizes um, on the right. And so what you can see is there's really no, that's percent error in the derivative on the total derivative on the y-axis for the different uh, um, I guess the top is the with respect to variables overall pressure ratio and T4 and then the the uh, the uh, left hand side there is different thrust specific fuel consumption values so the, the big key here is there's no right, right answer for what the step size and tolerance should be to calculate derivatives across the MPSS because they're all over the place and if you see some of those lines go to 100% error, that means you're taking a step that was so small that it didn't cause your MPSS solver to reconverge, so you got no change in your output. Um, 
So bonus points for anybody who can guess what the default tolerance for OpenMDO, which line corresponds to or that. NPSS. Oh, sorry, for NPSS, yeah. So the orange one. The orange one is the default one. The one that gives you 100% error more often than not uses the default solver tolerance in NPSS. Lesson is, if you're going to finite difference your solvers, please do a finite difference study right. and make sure you're getting reasonable derivatives. Yeah. Um, so uh, we saw some pretty big variations with this monolithic approach. It's just finite differencing around NPSS with uh, you know, an internal solver going on in there. And that's part of the reason why that's such a challenge. Um, the semi-analytic approach that uh, um, we implemented does a lot better, but um, still has quite a bit of error at times. So, uh, so uh, you know, it's 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 definitely an approach to consider if you're if you need to do finite differencing around a code like MPSS. Um, so, just real quickly, since I'm running out of time, um, we did an optimization problem. Here's the problem set up. I won't go through it in too much detail. Uh, but basically, we did the same. Uh, we optimized those models with the different uh, derivative calculation approaches. Basically, got to the same answer. So that thick blue black line that kind of zigzags everywhere is the final optimum. Uh, we did have one case that was the MPSS monolithic, where we had really uh, large step sizes and relatively large tolerances that got to a different answer just because it got driven off. But uh, the black dotted line is the original starting point. So you can see some of these different design variables moved a fair amount. Um, but really, they all got to the same answer at the end. So you're saying, well, what's the big deal? The big deal was the calculation times or the computational cost. So uh, pi cycle is the black bar. And then the different versions of MPSS with different derivatives and step sizes and tolerances are all the other bars. And you can see. Uh, Pi cycle clearly won on overall time, and that was because our derivative calculation time was basically zero um, th throughout that optimization. So I think this is kind of a good uh, indication of what type of benefit you can get by um, doing analytic derivatives compared to finite differencing across some really complicated codes. So, um, so that's kind of our big. Uh, the, the, the value, of, uh, I think, of PyCycle. So um, obviously, you've seen this work with uh, Justin's thesis, as well as what Anil's doing, kind of following on to that, looking at tying CFD with, with uh, PyCycle to do analysis of Stark Abel. Um, and then we've also integrated PyCycle in with our UAM uh, work that I showed yesterday, and doing some other stuff with boundary layer ingestion and propulsion airframe integration. So. That's kind of where we're going with it. Um, like I said, it's it's open source, so feel free to grab it, use it, tell us if there's things wrong with it. Um, we'll try to get to them. Um, but at that point, this point, I'll take any questions. I've used my whole half an hour almost, but. We can give you a few minutes to buffer. Anybody ask questions? <laughs> yes, Steve. Jason Kirk, paging Jason Kirk. And then uh, aside from leaps, the, the next couple of talks will get you through an understanding of Dimos, which as a transient framework is what we've been using. It's not nowhere near as focused on aircraft design as flops, but we've been using it for aircraft design problems. So uh, there's a couple of, Dimos is a good toolkit that you can use to build in the absence of leaps that you can use to build aircraft design type problems. Yeah, so uh, ben, ben made a comment that he's got a, a really useful package called Open Concept, uh, which is a little bit more narrowly focused than like flops. 
uh, and a lot, but a lot more uh, specific than, than Dymos. Uh, but it's built natively on top of OpenMDO and you can do some basic aircraft design stuff. And actually Ben has a couple of really good papers where he's used open concept to look at like thermal constraints on aircraft and how that affects like hybridization and things like that. So you, you guys should definitely check out, check out that work if you're interested in like a flops kind of application similar to PyCycle.